Hello everyone. Prostatontics on Friday. I'm the moderator, Professor Chu Inho. Happy New Year. 2021, the new year is upon us. Happy New Year. And I hope all the best and health for you in the year of white cow. This is the prostontics on Friday. We will do our best to resolve your questions regarding the prostodontics. We have invited Dr. Lee Su Young. This is the second topic of the problem solution series. The topic of today is prosthetic fractures by restorative materials and solutions. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Dr. Lee, what are you going to talk about just briefly? So I was given the title Restorative Prosthetic Fractures and Solutions. This is the agenda. I'll talk about the types of the prosthetics and the four materials used for the prosthetics will be discussed and um, how we can address the fractures in the prosthetics. From today, you will be able to communicate in real time through the dental site. Please leave questions there. The answers will be provided in real time. I hope you would participate in the discussion actively. We are going to talk about restorative prosthetic fractures and solutions with Dr. Lee. As I said before, we are going to talk about the types of uh, implant prosthetics. There are materials used for that, and let's go over one by one. It is best if we do not have fractures or complications, but when it happens, what need to be considered and how to resolve the situation. First, the types of implant prosthesis there are two, fixed and the removable. For the removable, RPD or complete denture using primarily resin, the problems and solutions would be similar to complete denture or RPD, and uh, I'm not going to talk about this. Today, I'm going to talk about four materials primarily used for the fixed prosthesis, gold, PFM, zirconia, and glass ceramic. Gold has very good stability and very strong. And it has been used for a long time. The glass ceramic on the right is very beautiful and aesthetic, as we know. What to choose among the four depends on the tooth location, intraoral condition, and patient's need. I will go over each of these, and I'll answer some questions and um, do the discussion with Professor Joe. First, the gold. This is very familiar material for us. In the 1990s, when implant began, we use the gold crown, and times have changed, and we have many more materials, and we have a wide variety of materials to choose from, but still this is used quite a lot. It is yellow, therefore it is not very good aesthetically, but it can be used in the posterior region. This can be the best material. Boko or palatal resin facing can be created to increase the aesthetics. It is um, high in strength and it has very good uh, physical properties and um, the thickness is very thin, like 1.5 millimeters. The problem with gold is that it is too expensive these days. 
I talked about 1990s at that time. It was around $400 per ounce. In 2010, it was over $1,700. And I searched the gold price before I came here. I found it is $1,825 per ounce. So the cost has gone up dramatically. When we use the material gold, it would be very burdensome in terms of the cost. But still, it is used as a material from time to time. When we make a crown out of gold, there are three types, cementation type, transfer solid or customs abutment can use it. The crown is made of gold and attached separately, and screw type for one piece of screw retained crown, ER type. It is not used at the top. Final prosthesis. The gold is used for the abutment. It was used a long time ago at the beginning using the UCLA. The abutment um, was using gold. Now it is not really used that way. The cementation type is most widely used one. Straight or angled abutment or custom abutments are used. In a standard way, the crown can be made. Gold crown is uh, made after preparing the abutment. Natural tooth on the left. What is it different from the implant? The size is very different. The size of the abutment. However, the crown is of the same shape on the left, natural tooth. The platform is quite big. On the right, solid or transfer abutment can be used. The platform is small and the crown is made of gold. In that case, wider diameter abutment is favorable. Economically, in terms of gold used for the crown, and also physically, during fabrication, wax pattern, or the deformation during casting. If it is big, uh, it is better, so it is helpful to have large diameter abutment. As you can see, the custom abutment is used and the crown is made of gold. This is similar to the prepared natural tooth. If it is made that way, gold can be shaped very similar to natural tooth, and uh, emergence profile in the gingiva would be similar to the natural tooth. And the amount of gold used can be reduced. Uh, this one has an access hole, cementation case, very big abutment is used and the gold crown is used. The second way is the screw hole type, the one piece screw retained type, or the abutment is made of customs. In this case, TS gold cast abutment, a special abutment is necessary. And this is the crown made. Foam, polyoxyl, methylene, plastic over it, wax up is used, similar to fabricating crown wax up, crown or custom abutment form is made and it is cast to create the abutment at the right bottom corner. Or if you use gold for the full contour, it would be the one piece screw retained crown. As I said before, there are many materials available. Using CAD CAM, zirconia can be used or one piece of titanium crown or abutment can be fabricated. So this type of usage is disappearing. Problems with the gold crown, it can be worn out or a hole can be developed. That's inevitable when it is used for a long time. If the problem occurs, it means it's time to replace it. It's not really a complication, but contact loosening can be a problem.
especially the mesial tooth can be drifting, creating space, then a food infection can occur. This should be resolved if the crown is gold, if the gold crown can be removed from the abutment soldering or resin buildup can be the solution. The problem, another problem is buckle resin facing can fall out. These are the complications or problems expected with gold crown. Here, mesial of number six, contact loosening occurred. Soldering, solder block is used for soldering. It is polished and the contact is um, resolved. This can be done only when the crown can be removed from the abutment. This is similar, but the soldering is not used. Mesial to gold crown. Mechanical retention form is made and composite resin buildup is used. This is not recommended strongly. If something is done, if some replacement should be done, this can be tried. Like this, if it is a multi-unit, if it is made of gold, the weight of gold is quite heavy. In this case, inevitably, the buckle facing would be made large. If mesial contact loosening occurs, the buckle facing can be extended mesially and it is polished, then it can be an excellent solution to the contact loosening problem. But if the gold crown cannot be removed intraorally, this can be a solution for that environment. You can just prepare that. Just like making a small inlay with gold, it is prepared an impression is taken and the gold inlay can be set when the crown cannot be removed intraorally. The second problem, the buckle facing can fall out. If it is used, this can happen from time to time. Retentive form or undercut can be made, but uh, the resin can fall out. So these are the problems that you can encounter when gold is used. But gold is very good material. I have a question. <clears throat> the resin facing, when it falls off, to repair it simply, can we do the light curing? Yes, Professor. If it can be removed from the mouth, if there is access hole, screw access hole, to remove it, extra oral um, treatment can be more convenient using the lab. If they cannot be done, chemical resin curing can be used, but it has very strong smell in general, and it is hard to get good contour. So, intraorally light curing, which we are familiar with it can be better. Another question, these days, Dr. Lee, how often do you do gold crown clinically? I hardly remember when I used it for the last 10 years, maybe just a couple of cases. You use it quite a lot, right? Yes, of course. I started implant in 1996. Automatically, I used um, gold as crown because of the gold prices. Not necessarily. That's uh, something additional. The prosthesis materials that we can choose. There's a wide variety with the digitalization. Gold is not appropriate for digital dentistry, so that is chosen less and less. It is difficult to do milling, right? Milling gold is not really done. After designing, 
we mill the wax or using the 3D printer, Bonau pattern is made and cast. That requires complicated analog process, so we don't use gold. Let's continue with the lecture. I'm going to talk about PFM crown. This is this has been used for a long time like gold. There are many advantages. Uh, it is very beautiful. Porcelain facing can be added. It can be used in the interior region also in the posterior region. In the posterior region, porcelain fracture or occlusal problem can occur. So the occlusal surface can be made of metal. And the rest, porcelain, PFM, as a Professor Cho said, PFM requires a lot of handling in the fabrication process. So like gold, it is not as much used as before. Just like gold, there are three types. So I'm going to skip over this. One difference from gold is that when you use PFM with a metal, when it is cast, a special NP cast should be used. It is made of cobalt, chrome, and molybden. The NP cast abutment should be used, and you need to keep that in mind. And the rest is same for using gold. Unlike gold, porcelain PFM can fracture, which is a huge complications that needs to be addressed. In 2003, this is published in JPD. Implant prosthesis complications. 20%, 30%, the high frequencies occur in the removable overdenture or resin fallout from the denture. In the fixed type, the highest frequency of complications occur in the aesthetic veneer fracture, porcelain, 14%, screw loosening or fracture of framework it's only 14% if they are combined, and if you include a bottom of the screw fracture, it's only 19%. But porcelain fracture 14% is very high. There are causes of a porcelain fracture in implant prosthesis. First, lack of periodontal ligament in the implant, no way to absorb the shock. Second, bulky porcelain. These two are the biggest causes. Occlusal prematurity, inadequate jaw relation record are not limited to implant PFM, so I will focus on the first two. First, PDL. Teeth have a PDL, so it is mobile, like 100 to 200 micron. So when occlusal force or shock occurs, it can be absorbed, but implant doesn't have any soft tissue part. So implant totally relies on the elasticity of investing bone, no way to absorb shocks. So for the abrupt shocks, the shocks are absorbed by fracturing the porcelain. Compared to PFM of natural tooth, implant PFM can fracture more. Bulky porcelain, in other words, there's a lot of unsupported porcelain, not supported by metal. On the natural tooth, the orientation groove is made when we reduce that. So 2 to 2.5 millimeters, 1.7 millimeters buckley, 1.5 millimeters lingual. So there is a set rule. If the reduction is made 
according to the set rule, the coping is made and the space for porcelain is already set. But as you saw in the gold slide, for implant, the abutment is small and the size is not consistent. If you just make a coping, there is a lot of empty space. If it is filled with the porcelain, the porcelain thickness would get bigger. Some people say porcelain is very strong material. So if it gets thicker, why does it fracture more? That is only true when uh, it is made as thick from the beginning. With CAD CAM, we mill to make a crown or inlay. When the porcelain block is made in a factory as a monolithic block, then the strength is very high. But the porcelain for PFM is built up with the powder, so if it gets thicker, there are a lot of pores and it receives a lot of thermal shock as it goes in and out of the furnace. So the thickness should be less than 1.5 millimeters. The thickness should be maintained to have proper physical property. You saw this before. The same PFM, metal coping in the natural tooth, metal coping thickness is natural, and the rest is filled with porcelain. In the case of implant on the right, the contour should be considered when the coping is made. Otherwise, the purple part, the coping would get very thick. In the lab process, it is very difficult to make such thick one. Wax pattern would shrink quite a lot, and the casting would have a lot of errors. To avoid that, like gold, larger diameter abutment should be selected to have the thickness of the coping or porcelain appropriate. Like this, if appropriate size of abutment is created for PFM, it's very good. And if you make the metal occlusal surface, you, you can avoid the fracture better. Buccal lingual or proximal contact loosening can occur, and the porcelain is made like this. If metal occlusal surface is used, the fracture can be reduced. Or, as you can see, if strong occlusal force is expected, this is a non aesthetic region so metal can be exposed. Most commonly used method after full contour wax up, it is cut back leaving the porcelain thickness. This requires a lot of handling and I, I try to avoid labor intensive work. If you use CAD CAM, making full contour is easy. Cutting back for a certain thickness is also easy. Even PFM prosthesis can be made easier. Screw retain the type, as you can see, surrounding the access hole. Chimney can be made first, then mechanically very stable prosthesis can be fabricated. As you can see here, inside of the chimney, metal lining is done. Later, when you insert a screwdriver, or porcelain buildup. It works as a dam, so porcelain buildup can be done easily. Complications. The most frequent one would be the contact loosening. Measure to number six, there is a gap. If that can be retrieved, pickup impression can be taken using resin, the post, and a model is made. And porcelain buildup is done. If it is completed like this, that's the best. But intraorally, the PFM that has been functioning is retrieved and do the adding, and it is put into the porcelain furnace. You need to remember there is a possibility of fracture, so that can be done within months after delivery into the mouth of the patient, you can do that. Otherwise, if PFM has been functioning, 
for a long time in the mouth and if you want to retrieve it and uh, do add-on there's a possibility of fracture this can be a better option this is not porcelain add-up this is composite resin build-up so impression is taken a model is made and the mechanical retention or chemical retention is facilitated by exposing the fresh porcelain surface by trimming using a burr porcelain hydrofluoric acid slate and composite resin can be used to provide some form compared to gold if this is repaired like this it has more longevity porcelain composite resin can be attached to it reliably using this method there's no risk of putting it in the porcelain furnace there is no risk of fracture in this repair work or this is commonly used method two three unit bridge and one is broken mesial loosening can be the cause or this is actually broke just like preparing a crown it is prepared the contact will be put over it as a saddle and the impression is taken the weird looking PFM is fabricated put on top of it it is a very good restoration method M0 of 16 is broken just like only prep porcelain is prepped impression is taken gold only restoration is made this can last for a long time up to now I've talked about considerations for PFM and porcelain thickness should not be very high when loosening or fracture occurs what we can do have been described do you use PFM a lot in your clinic well I don't use it a lot but sometimes I have to use it especially when insurance implant is to be placed zirconia or gold crown are not allowed even if the patient wants to pay for the crown other than PFM it is not allowed so if a patient wants to use the health insurance up to the abutment and uh, if he or she is willing to pay for the crown that is not allowed the crown should be PFM to be covered by the national insurance and sometimes I use analog up to abutment customs or stock abutment is connected and the impression is taken in a normal way so PFM fabrication requires analog approach but a digital approach can also be used after scanning the occlusal surface is made of metal as well in that case then everything can be done digitally leaving the buckle facing the cutback is cast then digitally it can be completed the cutback facing can be filled with resin without requiring a model if needed a model can be made using a 3d printer to get the contour and the facing can be made of porcelain so that's how I use the PFM when the contact is problematic you use the resin sometimes if PFM is for a lot of years if it is sent to the furnace it will break down so that takes a lot of time and it is very difficult but the using resin is a good idea if it has been under function for some time I always use resin to repair one more thing I have a crack tooth syndrome I have a gold crown in my mouth sometimes I'm not rich so I cannot afford to use gold spoon and when I use a stainless spoon galvanic current occurs but this is PFM porcelain covers the occlusal surfaces so I don't think you have that problem occlusal surface 
is not covered with the porcelain all the time. Functional cusp. I like ear type crown. So chimney is created the occlusal surface so that can occur. In the case of implant, galvanic current would not be sensed because it doesn't have nerve. If gold is used on the opposing tooth, it can occur, right? Yes. I will talk about the zirconia prosthesis, which is my preference, because there is no galvanic current. I will explain that later. Okay, okay you can go back to your lecture. Let me talk about the zirconia crown. As Professor Cho said, this is contained in my slide. The advantage of zirconia is very beautiful color. Its base color is white and it doesn't have the metal lining inside like PFM. And the thermal conductivity is very low. If desired, it can be covered with a porcelain like a PFM. On the zirconia, porcelain can be built up because zirconia is zirconium oxide. The metal zirconia is oxidated, therefore porcelain can be attached to it chemically and it is easy to build up. I like this very much because it can be fabricated using CAD CAM and uh, it has very high fracture strength. Bending strength is 900 to 1500 megapascal. So it can be uh, good for bridge at any place. Advantage, aesthetic, biocompatible, and galvanic effect is very low. It's almost non-existent. So those are the advantages. Disadvantage, according to papers, it can cause abrasion of opposing teeth and that there is low temperature degradation. These two are cited as disadvantages in some papers. Zirconia is fabricated and it is finalized with glazing. According to many papers, polishing um, can be used for finalization. Then. It causes the least abrasion of opposing teeth, that is the zirconia material. Regarding the low temperature degradation, recently the problem is addressed. I don't want to go into that subject. Let me skip over. There are two ways for zirconia crown. Zirconia abutments can be used. These are for Ostem TS, straight type and 17 degrees angled abutment can be used. It can be cut and contoured on top of it. Porcelain can be built up. Actually, this is more used. CAD CAM is used for the designing. On the abutment, the impression is taken in an analog way. After scanning, the crown can be designed digitally. It is set like that. In the anterior region, zirconia today compared to the past, it is very translucent. The abutment inside made of titanium, the grayish color can show through. It can be through the crown as well as gingiva. Zirconia is used over it. Porcelain is built up aesthetically superior. On the left, number 12 uses PFM, and on the right, porcelain fused to zirconia, PFZ, the difference between the two. It has very good response of gingiva, biocompatible, and also the color is very good. The latest is zirconia. In the past, it was opaque, and it was based on white color, staining, and the colors were created by lab technician or by a dentist. But now the zirconia has various shades and very good translucency. There are four layers in so many zirconia products available these days. So zirconia is number one choice for a crown. Zirconia also has the problem of a fracture, which cannot be avoided. 
the porcelain fracture is different from the zirconia fracture, so we need to consider some other factors. We need to understand the physical properties of zirconia. Zirconia is very pure material, um, non other materials included, depending on the temperatures. There are three different phases. Most important one is the monoclinic phase in room temperature. And if it is over 1170 degrees, T phase, tetragonal phase, it moves between those two phases due to the changes in the volume. That way, we obtain the physical properties useful for dentistry. Currently, we are using the partially stabilized zirconia mainly based on the properties during the lab process or uh, when we do the occlusal adjustment, we need to be careful. The partially stabilized zirconia, uh, there is a way to strengthen the strength. We used to have exam questions regarding this, the mechanism of tr strengthening zirconia. Transformation toughening is the mechanism. As you can see in the picture, when crack starts, porce porcelain or all ceramic can fracture only when a crack propagates. When it shifts from the T phase to M phase, there is an increase of the volume. So the propagation of the crack stops due to expanded volume. So it doesn't break. That is the transformation toughening. The zirconia prosthesis is utilizing this mechanism. We need to be careful not to create the physical shocks during the lab process. And clinically, when we adjust the zirconia, we should be careful not to hit it, not to create shocks. So we need to be careful in choosing the instruments. Special instruments, polishing tool for zirconia should be used, and it, we should use the low speed hand pieces. Checking with an articulation paper can be done in the mouth, however, cutting or polishing should be done outside of the mouth at low speed. If it has to be done intraorally, you need to use the water irrigation spark or heat generation should be prevented. That should be remembered. When fracture occurs, unlike porcelain, remake is the only way to repair because there's no way to repair it. We need to maintain the zirconia crown in its integrity as much as possible. This has been the talk about zirconia. So zirconia makes fractures less than other materials, but is there any tip to prevent fracture? From the planning, we need to secure appropriate thickness. For implant, abutments can be selected by us. Therefore, we need to choose um, enough thickness of an abutment for zirconia crown. We cannot do anything until the prosthesis is delivered from the lab. After we receive it, we need to minimize the adjustment to zirconia prosthesis. This is a joke, but they say, rather than reducing zirconia, you'd better reduce the opposing tooth. That's a very aggressive statement, but what it means is that you need to minimize the adjustment to zirconia crown. Mindless adjustment to zirconia would create problems. As soon as we adjust the occlusion, the T phase is changed to M phase. Once it is changed, the transformation toughening already happens, so the strength is not ensured. So we need to make it properly and maintain it. When there is a problem in the occlusion, we need to take it out of the mouth and use low speed instrument for zirconia to do the preparation. That is what I recommend. In the future, zirconia will be in the mainstream. 
for implanting and for other prosthesis. If we use the ER type, when we fabricate a zirconia, do we need to make a hole? Yes. For PFM, chimney is made in advance. For zirconia, it is designed without a hole. It is milled and sintered when it arrives to us. The access hole should be there. Making the access hole is very cumbersome and hard. And uh, the switch from T to M occurs, therefore, it should be fabricated with the access hole. Thank you very much. And let's talk about the materials. Sorry about consuming too much time. Glass ceramic crown. Actually, I'm going to talk about uh, the reinforced ceramic. The strength of feldspar, which is not reinforced ceramic, is 120 to 140 megapascal, weak for implant prosthesis. Lithium desilicate, Emax has about 500 megapascal, very strong, that can be used in the posterior region. Before zirconia, this, still this is um, the best for aesthetics. There are two ways to mill it, press and the CAD cam, but uh, it should be thick compared to zirconia. As I said before, press milling and CAD CAM milling. The press approach was easy to access by a lab. The furnace, as you can see here, there is press plunger at the top in the conical form. Other instruments or burn out furnace, uh, it's already equipped by the lab as a basic uh, instrument, therefore it was easy to switch to press. Impression is taken in a standard way. It is waxed up and using the press, Emax was fabricated. But CAD CAM is expensive. Fabrication can be easily done, but it requires a learning curve. It requires investment, so press was used quite a lot. Advantages, very aesthetic, and the biocompatibility is, is excellent, but disadvantage, fracture, risk for posterior restoration, and this can be used for single case only. And it is complicated in terms of the fabrication process, so this is not used as much as before. So in my clinic, I don't really use this method. The reason why I mention this is that there is a T-based link for the abutment connection part, stock products available also from Austin. So a clinic purchase a T-base and only the superstructure can be milled. I will show you how to do that. The block is milled. This is Emacs. So it is cured at uh, 850 degrees. The color comes out using the resin cement. This is attached to the T-base link to easily fabricate the one-piece screw retained crown. So this is how it is used. In the premolar area, this is used often, so it can be done easily. If you have a lab, if you upgrade the furnace only, this can be easily used. So this has been the four materials used f frequently. Let me summarize. In 2018, crowns by material type has been analyzed. According to the study, 62% is all ceramic, primarily G zirconia, including Emax, semi-precious and non-precious, which means PFM, that's about 30%. Precious gold is meager 7%, and the gold is uh, really not used much. All ceramic will be used more and more in the future. 
we need to focus on zirconia. We need to understand the physical property of zirconia. So we talked about the material fractures and how to prevent the fracture. Thank you very much. Let's go to Q&A session. You talked about various materials. If conditions are equal, which material would you prefer? Which would last longest? Which one would you recommend? In Korea, um, a lot of treatment is covered by the national insurance and it would increase. We need to understand the PFM for that, the physical properties of PFM especially the thickness of the porcelain should be understood. Other than that, for general prosthesis, I recommend zirconia in terms of the biocompatibility or the color or occlusal adjustments. On the CAT cam, we can check the occlusion in advance. It can be fabricated at the same time, like a custom abutment. Zirconia is number one choice. We have a lot of questions received in real time. Would you scroll it up, please? Mr. Park Jong-hyun asked this question through YouTube. When the ceramic is very thin, what about the fracture? I talked about 2.5 millimeters, including the metal coping. Ceramic is just 1.5 millimeters, if it becomes thinner, the fracture risk would increase. Other than implant prosthesis, if you do PFM, the ceramic doesn't fall off. Actually, ceramic gets thinner and thinner, still clings to the metal. But if the ceramic is very thick, it can fall off. So this, the thicker the ceramic, it can more fall off. If the ceramic thickness gets thinner due to occlusal adjustment, does that fracture more than appropriate thickness? We just discussed that. If it is thicker, that's more problematic. If the thickness is appropriate, it will be okay, but if it's thinner, it doesn't fall off more. So this question goes to both of you. If crown needs to be fabricated for anterior and posterior region, what restoring material would you choose? I don't quite understand it. Does that mean I fabricate the crown myself or the crown to be delivered to my mouth? If Dr. Lee if I am an implant patient for anterior and posterior, Dr. Lee or either me, what material would, would you use? I have two implants in my mouth. Zirconia is used for the crown. In the posterior region, I cannot benefit from the national insurance for the implant treatment. I believe I would use hybrid abutment for aesthetic reasons. Emax family old ceramic would be used. Old ceramic? Yes. That's a superior in terms of aesthetics. If it is a splinted bridge, zirconia will be chosen. Zirconia colors are really brilliant these days. So monolithic zirconia can be used. Or if you want to characterize the color, porcelain buildup can be used. So PFZ, the first choice for the anterior region is reinforced ceramic, rich, zirconia, and posterior region, zirconia. Yes, those are the first choices. In case by case, modifications can be made. So. Is this all 
live questions, real-time questions. Would you scroll up, please? Okay, that's all. Today, we had a very good Q&A session. Dentists who have experienced prosthetics fractures, I believe today's lecture has been very helpful. So prosthodontics on Friday needs to close down today. You don't need to feel bad if you didn't watch from the start. Go to the dental site and you can watch from the beginning and also previous programs. Next time, we are going to talk about fractures implant and the preventive measures. Dr. Kim gi Song of Namsang Clinic, Dental Clinic, will be the speaker. Thank you for your watching. Thank you very much. It was a very enjoyable lecture. Thank you.